Welcome to the Illuminate Your Essence podcast, where we cut through the distractions, programs, and stories that have created chaos in your life and discover the truth, bliss, and joy that exists beyond the external clutter and resides within. Welcome back, my friends. I'm in studio with a beautiful friend today named Phoenix Vincent. And you can see if you're watching the YouTube version, what a light she is, that vibrant hair that she has. I love the red hair that she has and the great big smile. And she has become a beautiful friend in my life for the last few years and given me so much wisdom and so many golden nuggets that I really believe that she could share so much on this podcast today. We're going to be talking about a subject that impacts I would say the majority of individuals, and that is one of anxiety, of, of feeling out of control, worrying, stressing, tension, all the things. And that is just a fact in this world, but here's the best news. Phoenix is going to help us understand how to get back our control, our power, and take it back and stop allowing anxiety to have the power. So Phoenix, thank you for coming and being on the show, first of all. Yay, thank you. And Phoenix, you have a, a company named Dance Your Truth Incorporated, but it's so much, there's so much about this yes. that you do. And I just want you to put it in your own words. What do you do? What is your business? Yes, well, Dance Your Truth started because I was looking for ways to help people find healing through movement or mm -hmm. dance, but some people that's a trigger word. So we'll say movement for all the, I'm not a dancers out there, <laughs> but I, I did. And it was a very successful formula. It still is. And I continued to do that for many years. And then I reached a point where I started to pay a lot more attention to anxiety and ended up overcoming anxiety myself, writing a book about it. And then because apparently I can't just stick to one thing, I then went on to start really doing a lot of research into feminine energy, what it even is, how to help women to embrace their full self, because mm -hmm. at the core of every single one of these things at the core of dance, your truth, overcoming anxiety, activating feminine energy is everyone's innate need and desire to love and accept themselves as they are. Mm -hmm. to Amen. Be safe inside their own bodies, emotionally, physically, all of the things. And so while it seems like I'm doing a lot of different things, they are all the same thing. It's just different ways of helping people see who they are and how beautiful and incredible they are. So oh, I love that. And you said a word that I think really needs to be looked at. We hear this, we're safe. And people mm -hmm. are like, I feel safe. I feel safe. Mm -hmm. I got this. I'm okay but do we really feel safe? And can you kind of explain and expand, you know, feeling safe because really that's anxiety in a nutshell, isn't it? We're not feeling yeah. safe. We're not feeling safe. Yeah. Well, there's a couple different ways that I look at it. One of them is from a feminine or, or actually just female perspective, because mm -hmm. there are definitely females out there who operate from a more masculine place. And that's not what I'm talking about here. But being a female is a challenge because no matter how you spin it, we are prey. Mm -hmm. No matter how you spin it, we are smaller and weaker than males are. Mm -hmm. That's just a biological fact. And yeah. the awareness of that creates a certain amount of tension. Yeah. It's a certain amount of tension where we can't go into a dark parking lot by ourselves without being nervous. And so that's one aspect of safety and that's why I believe women tend to have a little bit more natural predisposition to anxiety because we're mm -hmm. already on high alert. Men experience anxiety as well. And so I'm not, I'm not downplaying the, the effect that anxiety has on men because it mm -hmm. certainly is there for various reasons as well. But anxiety in general, it's something that can be so overwhelming. I mean, when I, I dealt with anxiety for about 12 years, and I remember thinking I would take depression any day over this <laughs> because mm -hmm. suddenly you're a prisoner in your own body. And that's when it comes to that word safe. There's a lack of feeling safe. And sometimes it's because of thought processes we have yeah. that create a lack of safety. Sometimes it comes from self-judgment. You think we talk about people, people are wanting other people to create a safe space for them, but yet we don't create a safe space in our own self. Yeah. 
we're so mean to ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves. We're so high in our expectations that we create this internal environment where we don't know if we're worth anything because we haven't figured out if we're worth anything. Yeah. Those are profound, profound words. And I know so many individuals that anxiety takes over their life to a point where they start taking different pharmaceuticals to numb it, just numb it, turn it all off. I cannot do it anymore. And I am sending out love to those of you listening that do. I was on a pharmaceutical for 10 years because Mm -hmm. I needed it during that time. Um, life was just, I didn't have the skills. I didn't have the tools. I didn't understand my body the way that I do now. And I didn't feel safe. And so those were a crutch that I leaned on for a little while until I could get to the point where I could trust myself that Mm -hmm. I didn't need those anymore. So Mm -hmm. sisters out there, brothers out there, if you're taking pharmaceuticals, please know that I'm not knocking it, but I do want you to know that you do at some point when you're ready and you talk with a doctor that you can get to a place where you can self-manage and you can start really honoring yourself, feeling the emotions that you can't feel during that time. And then learn a system for feeling at peace as your normal, instead of the exception to the rule. So Phoenix, where do we start? I I know that is always what I say whenever I'm embarking on a new thought process, where do I even start? So help Hmm. us understand in, in your world, where we start, are we starting the discussion and awareness? Where do we start? Well, as far as healing from anxiety and understanding that, is that what you Well, even just understanding where anxiety comes from, like, like, I think there's a little bit of an awareness, just like with Mm -hmm. the movement that I'm doing with the time to heal me too, had to come first, right? Mm -hmm. Time to heal is second. So awareness of anxiety. Some people live in this world and they just think this is the world. The world's chaotic. The world's awful. Endure to the end because maybe there's a better place when we die. (laughs) So if I can just endure to the end, I'm good. And not realizing, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be a part of the world. No, it doesn't. And joy is always available. Mm -hmm. As far as though, where we start at the core of anxiety is fear. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, fear, it's, it's, it's a fear-based experience. Mm-hmm. And when we are experiencing fear frequently enough, then it just turns into a constant buzz. Mm-hmm. And the trouble with that is, is that we can't always in the moment of anxiety go, oh, this caused it because we were in such a pattern of fear mm-hmm. that it just stacked and stacked and stacked. Yeah. And so one of the things that I teach people when it comes to anxiety is there's two parts. So I started having anxiety when my now 15 year old son right after he was born and believe it or not, I went from therapist to therapist who said, we don't treat anxiety. We treat depression and OCD, but it was not common. Anxiety wasn't common until the last few years. Yeah. Now everyone has anxiety. (laughs) And hopefully all the therapists understand something about it because they didn't at the time. And I remember going, well, okay, give me what you got. And, and nobody actually helped. I'm just going to be honest about that. But one, one therapist said something that has stuck with me to this day. And that was in understanding the approach to anxiety. He said, Mm -hmm. it's like an elephant on a three-legged stool. And there's two things we have to do. One, we have to decrease the size of the elephant. And number two is we've got to add more legs to that stool. Mm. And so there's two parts to overcoming anxiety. Number one is when you're in the height of anxiety, you're not really capable of fixing your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can do affirmations all day long, but they're not really, I mean, most people yeah. will be like, I tried and it didn't work. No, especially if you get to the place where you're almost in a panic attack. Yes. Now your biological functions are taking over. Yes. There's no going with this thought process. Yeah. At that point for you me, it's breath. it's breath. It's yeah. breath. That's all mm-hmm. I got. Yep. And that's like you mentioned, breath work is one. So that would be the, the ideal approach is rewiring the brain. Mm-hmm. The ideal approach is you decrease the size of that elephant. 
-hmm. Okay. But when you're in the height, you can't rewrite your brain. At least most people can't. If you have a really strong will, you might be able to. And so you have to add legs to your stool and you do that through taking the edge off. So breath work is one way. Tapping is a great way, emotional mm -hmm. freedom technique, which Wendy also teaches. I know that. Yeah. Um, those would be two really, probably two of the best ones. For some people, it's going to be pharmaceuticals. For others, it's going to be certain essential oils. Mm -hmm. For others, it's going to be, I, there's some really great homeopathic remedies that take the edge off. Mm -hmm. And so you have to get something calmed down so the brain can even function. Because when the brain is in that panic attack, it's in high adrenal state. Mm -hmm. So it's just like when you are, if you were confronted with a bear, you're not going to do a long analysis of the situation. <laughs> you're going to run the hell away. Yes, you're going to run away or fight if you're crazy, but you're going to fight or flight. And I know people say fight, flight, fight, flight, or freeze. In my mind, freeze is a internal version of flight because, and I say this because a really important part of anxiety is understanding that when you're in fear, you think in binary terms, mm -hmm. you get two options. And so that shows up in funny ways in our life. We go, I have to be perfect or I'll be rejected. Yeah. What about all the options in the <laughs> middle? <laughs> but when we're in fear, we only think of two options because we don't have time. And when we, if you're ready to run from a bear, you don't have a time to decide between three. Yeah. You're going to pick from two options. That's it. And we're going to go on instinct as well, but those are, that is what I, what I teach people. So you have to bring the edge off. Yeah. So like I said, tapping, even a simple exercise that's similar to tapping because it still activates some of those same responses in your nervous system mm -hmm. is, and this is based on the title of my book. It's called, it's not yours. And so mm -hmm. I picture myself calm and I picture like a pillar of strength inside of me. I pat my chest and I say mine. And then I picture the anxiety and I picture it over there and I say, not mine. And I push mm -hmm. it away. I do that over and over. That's a great way to take the edge off mine, not mine. And I push away. Mm -hmm. um, those are little things that you have to do to take the edge off before you that. can start the rewiring. I, I love that. You'll see a common thread in a lot of my podcasts that part of the healing process is learning to be the observer and know that the emotion is not you. Yes. The emotion is outside of you. It's energy emotion in your body. And your only job is to either feel it, move it, or choose something else. When you're in high anxiety, it's hard to change to something else. Yes. So you're most likely going to need to move it. And so what you're talking about is learning to move it through tapping, yes. which is using acupressure points, energy meridians or nadas or nadis, I should say, if you're talking Eastern language, and you're basically tapping on those points as you're saying the things you're already saying to yourself. So you might yeah. as well say it out loud. And then of course you've got breath which sometimes I don't have the bandwidth to sit there and tap. Sometimes it's literally just breathing in for four, holding for four, breathing out for four, holding for four, and then working my way up to 10. Because if you can inhale for 10 and exhale for 10, your body's like, oh, well, she's not running away. Yeah. There's no way she's threatened. She, she can't breathe 10 seconds and not be safe. Right. So. Yeah, there because when it. we go into anxiety, we start breathing shallow and fast. Mm -hmm. And so when we calm our breath, we start calming the physiological response, like you said. And um, another great breath work exercise is breathing out is increasing your exhale. Mm. Because if yes. you think about it, when we feel safe and relief, we tend to go huh. sigh, sigh. And so we're, <sighs> we're replicating that extra exhale. So breathing in for say four, but breathing out for seven or eight or 12. And increasing the exhale also is very powerful because it tells our body, oh, you're safe. <sighs> that relief sigh, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Little funny side note story. Actually, snipers do this, right? Mm -hmm. So they breathe in for four, they hold for seven, and then they breathe out for eight. Yes. And that makes them nice and calm and laser focused. Yeah. Uh, I hope never to be a sniper, but 
Um, (laughs) I can use techniques that help them calm themselves or just everyday circumstances, right? Oh, absolutely. So, well, that's great. Those are some really, really great starting points. The breath, EFT, tapping. There are so many resources for tapping. I, I mean, I've got some in my in my um, time to heal class, but yeah. you can find them all over YouTube. You know, yeah. there are tapping videos everywhere. Well, there's a, you there's an learn. app too. That's really great. Yeah. Um, the tapping that's solution made by the, yeah, made by the, well, there's a whole family of people that are doing work with tapping. I forget their name. You probably know, but Oh, um, you know what? It will tapping come to solution me. is the name of the app. Yeah. That's a really great one. It has so good. Specific, so good. Yeah. So from there, what other things? I know you have an entire book. So lead us, yeah. lead us to some other things. Absolutely. So uh, several things have come to my mind while we're talking and I, I get excited to share. And I know this sounds crazy, but I actually get really excited to talk to people about anxiety mm-hmm. because I go, I, I cracked the code on that one. I spent 12 years trying to figure it out. And I didn't do medication as a choice because I wanted to figure out how to solve it. Mm-hmm. And that's why there, I remember the moment that for me that I solved it, which isn't going to be the same moment for everyone else. Mm-hmm. But for me, the moment was when I heard something on a podcast where they expressed that there's only three things that really belong to you, your thoughts, your feelings, your choices. And for some reason, it resonated with my brain in a whole new way where I went, oh, because most of my anxiety, and I'll talk about different sources of anxiety in a second, but most of mine was wrapped up in what other people were thinking about me. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, the way this certain podcaster expressed it, it clicked that it really didn't belong to me, what other people were thinking about me, that it really belonged to them. And I remember it was just instant anxiety just was gone. And I knew it was a goodbye. It wasn't, (laughs) it wasn't just a nice relief moment. It was, it was, it was a goodbye. It was the buildup of all these things I'd been learning and studying and went, okay, Mm. now we're diffused. And since then, I'm very careful about my languaging. You know, you hear a lot of people in the self-help world and personal development world who will talk about being careful about the words I am, because anytime you say I am, you're claiming something for your soul. Absolutely. And so you have to be very careful how you use the words I am. I would extend that to I have. So I never say I have anxiety. Mm -hmm. because that's a claim. I don't need to own it. I might say I'm experiencing some anxiousness right now. Yeah. And it's so much easier to diffuse. It doesn't become symptomatic. It doesn't become chronic. Well, it's It's because it's not you. It's not you. It's not your truth. It is something you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. You're experiencing emotions. You aren't your emotions. You're experiencing them. No. And I'm just experiencing it for a moment. You know, and emotions are like, I tell people, it's like you're sitting on a park bench and people are walking by and they're meant to just walk past, but it's as if someone we didn't like started walking past us. We went up and grabbed them and said, who are you? Where did you come from? Why are you here? And we held them there. And that's what we do with unpleasant emotions sometimes. Instead of just letting them pass on by the way they're meant to be, we grab them and worry about them. Or worse, we stuff them into a suitcase. But it's like a person doesn't want to be stuffed into a suitcase, nor do our emotions. So what they do is they piggyback on other things. So if I, for all the stuffers out there, that's why you have moments where you go, why am I so mad about this? Why am I crying this much? Well, it's because something else you stuffed piggybacked and said, oh, that's how I can get out. That's how I can get out of the suitcase. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you. Let me get out. (laughs) Yes. Like I didn't want to be in there. So gave me an excuse to sneak out. And so, yeah, we are going to have moments of fear, Mm -hmm. but anxiety to me is when fear is controlling everything and it's creating this, this absence of, of, of safety and self. And I also teach people there's three different places anxiety will show up in the body. It'll show up in your throat, in your chest, or your stomach. Mm -hmm. Some people will get them in two. I've never met anyone that says all three, at least that I remember. (laughs) But throat, it shows up because we are worried about our words. We're worried about what to say. We're worried about how people perceive our words. We're just constantly overanalyzing our words. So understanding the source matters. Because often with anxiety, we go, I don't know what happened. It came out of nowhere. Well, it didn't come out of nowhere, but it felt like that because of everything that was stacked for a long time. 
in our chest, it has to do with that basic fear that at the root of that fear is a fear for life. And people don't think they associate things with death that they associate with death. Mm -hmm. Um, I could ask someone, you know, so someone might say, I'm just really afraid of being rejected. And I'll say, well, what does that mean about you if you're rejected? Well, if I'm rejected, that means that, that I haven't done a good job. Okay, well, what does it mean about you if you haven't done a good job? Well, if I haven't done a good job, then I'm not living up to my expectations. But we eventually get to, I shouldn't be here. And all of a sudden I go, wait, 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 wait. So if someone rejects you, you should die? And then mm-hmm. they see how illogical that is. But mm-hmm. the brain attaches a lot of things to possible death. Right. And so that's when people feel it in their chest. They'll feel more heart, heart rate things. They'll feel it more uh, difficulty breathing. Mm-hmm. And the panic attacks where the breathing shows up because there's a part of them that's afraid that they're dying. Right. Well, in primitive times, if you were rejected from your tribe, you did die. Yes. So that totally makes sense. If you think about genetically, we've been wired and programmed not to be rejected by our tribe. So there is that, that, um, source of, oh my goodness, I can't be rejected. And so even though it makes zero sense, especially in today's society, 21st century, Mm. we shouldn't be afraid of dying. If someone doesn't agree with what we have to say, but Mm. yet our heart will tell us that we do worry about that, right? Yeah. When it's our brain that thinks that its primary initiative is to keep us alive. And yeah. so it's always looking at what could possibly kill me. So when you live in a really safe world, it's not going to go, well, my job here is done. You don't need me because you're so safe. It looks for the problems. It makes yeah. them up if it has to, because it wants to do its job. And it's yeah. really beautiful. We can thank our brain for trying so hard to keep us alive Mm -hmm. and then say, I need you to sit in the back seat and quit driving the car. (laughs) I call it my crazy bus driver. I'm like, yes, hold on (laughs) fella. My turn to drive. You're, you're a little erratic. People (laughs) on the bus are getting a little sick. We, we got to We got to switch places here. So absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. And then we have our stomach and that has to do with our, our, our people who get into decision paralysis or overanalyzing their decision, afraid that this decision is going to be the wrong decision. And they just go through, go round and round in circles on that. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's really important to understand where in the body is because there's a different process for each part. There's a different, you know, the breathing is going to help a lot for our throat and our chest people, but it's not going to help very much for for our stomach people Mm -hmm. because they need to know that it's okay to fail. It's okay to make decisions that don't work out. They need to know that, that they have decision-making capabilities. And so for them, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's still possible. It's still possible to release all of those. It's still possible for every human being to have confidence and joy. Mm. I mean, I went from really most of my life, I would have said I was happy and joyful, maybe 10% of the time. Now I would say the opposite. I experience feelings of sadness, anxiousness, fear, maybe 10% of the time. Yep. And it's because our natural state is one of joy. And that's why the title of my book is It's Not Yours. Mm -hmm. It wasn't yours to begin with. You didn't mean to pick it up. It's not, there's nothing broken about you that you picked up this anxiety and this fear. It also means though that you can let it go. It is possible. There's some people that might hear a few things in this and go, oh, that's it. And it clicks for them. There's some people that need more repetition, that need more depth, that need more strategies. Yeah. But it is 100% possible. And that right there says a lot, just the hope that this doesn't have to be your lifetime reality that you are just, oh, you know, I've, I've actually had family members say, I have a broken brain. This is just Mm -hmm. the way I am. I am in a state of anxiety all the time. And therefore there's something wrong with me. And so just the hope, just that seed of hope that says sister and brother, this does not need to be your reality. You are more than your anxiety. You are more than your emotions. And once you become um, once you're allowed to use tools to calm yourself down, 
calm your nervous system down. And honestly, I feel like anxiety and the nervous system, I mean, they're just hand in hand, right? Of course they are. And because because it's a fear response. So it's, it's all sympathetic nervous system. Exactly. And we're bombarded with stimuli right now. I think the reason why anxiety has exploded over the last two decades is because our brain wasn't designed to handle this much information. So Mm -hmm. we have too much stimuli being thrown at us. And as a result, our nervous system is also overloaded. So it's not even the normal stuff that we're dealing with anymore. It's all this stuff. And so learning to calm our nervous system down, learning to uh, help ourselves come back to that sympathetic nervous system that is so foreign for so many of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cortisol is like running rampant through our bodies. Mm -hmm. We can't sleep. We can't eat without our digestive system being disruptive. And, mm-hmm. and it's, it's time to take that back. And that hope that you're saying is so empowering. And mm-hmm. so we talked about breath. We talked about tapping. We talked about understanding and being the observer. Are mm-hmm. there any other things that on this podcast, this short podcast, mm-hmm. um, that you would like to say as maybe some of the final things that you would wrap up in a bow yeah. before we close things up. Yes, absolutely. And I love that you asked it that way, because I just thought, you know, this podcast can't end without me saying one more thing. And that okay. is that everything I talked about how fear is at the root of anxiety, but everything that we do is either through fear or love. Yes. Yes. And we do innately know how to love. And so mm-hmm. if we can look at what's going on and say, well, how can I give more love now? If I'm in a fear response, the best thing is love. Sometimes that love is just love for self and going, you know what? It's understandable that I'm stressed out right now. It's understandable. I love using that phrase for myself instead of why can't I, why am I doing this? Why am I reacting this Mm. way? Instead of going, you know what? It's understandable. I'm a little stressed right now. There's a lot going on. That's understandable. Mm. And we give love in the moment. It's understandable that I'm having a hard time breathing. I'm feeling a lot of stress and that starts to soften it. It starts to bring in that compassion for self Mm -hmm. and start showing ourselves love instead of, because our reaction to honestly, to anxiety is usually fear. Oh no, oh no, here it comes. Yeah. And all that is, is more fear instead of going, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful that I have such a giant capacity to feel. Mm. Oh, that feels so good right there. Um, that compassion, that forgiveness, that love, because you're exactly right. We are stuck in fear. So when you, fear cannot exist in the same space as love. And when you're bringing that compassion in and that forgiveness piece in for ourselves, it exposes it to the light, which completely dismantles the fear. And so now we can start to feel safe again. Right. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I think that was the best way to wrap this up. And of course, there's so much more that individuals can learn and start. And a lot of people need a little handholding, you know, especially when they're feeling like so out of sorts. So Phoenix, how do they reach out to you and how do they get to know you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me at danceyourtruth.org. Go fill out a contact us page and I'll reach out to you and connect. Or you can find me on social media, Dance Your Truth on Facebook and on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of different ways to connect. How can they so get your people book? in all different situations? It's on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> so if you have Amazon prime, then it's free on Kindle. So even oh, cooler. Wonderful. Um, or you can buy it on paperback for, I think nine 95. And it's, it's not, it's, it's not yours. It's not yours. Okay. It's not yours. Perfect. Anxiety is not yours. It's not yours. So by go get Phoenix it. It's your Vincent. Y'all have Prime. We know you do. Everybody has Prime. <laughs> so go to Kindle, go to your Amazon, throw it on your Kindle, start reading it today. That could be your action step because I always feel like these are great and they're power packed um, half hours of information. But if you do nothing with them, then what of what value are they? So mm-hmm. you listened, if it resonated and you were like, wow, this really applies. I really feel like I could get some value out of this don't hesitate, get on the Amazon app and get it and start today, start somewhere. Even if it's just breathing in for four, 
holding for four, breathing out. And that breath needs to go down into your belly, by the way, not your chest. And so as you're learning to do that, you will start to see some great, great results from just breathing, from just doing the things that Phoenix has mentioned, but more than that, go get her book and really start this process of living a life of joy and pleasure and all the goodness that's in store of you in store for you, rather than the pain and the 90% you're not feeling good and you're out of sorts. That's no way to live, right? Phoenix. Right. Correct. And you don't yeah. have to, nobody does. Yes. Thank you, Phoenix. So yes, much for being on today's show. It's been so valuable. And I know it's going to help a lot of individuals learn to take back their power and not to give it to anxiety anymore for even a second. So yes. So until Thank next you. time, yes. we'll go to the next dialogue, deep dive and discussion here on illuminate your essence. Thank you for being a part of this today and have a fabulous week. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I invite you to continue the dialogue, the discovery, and the deep dive on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Also on my website. Feel free to download your free copy of the five steps to discovering your inner voice and begin your journey of discovering the truth within today.